Hi everybody, today we're going to uh, take a look at how to use the new Merge Images facility that has appeared in uh, Manifold System Release 9. Everything that we're doing here in this video you can also do in Manifold Viewer, which is the free viewer download. Download Viewer for free if you don't have 9 so you can try this out at home yourself. Uh, what we're looking at here is, uh, is a Release 9 uh, workspace and uh, we have a map open that's called Map Layers. And that Map Layers uh, map has uh, two layers to it. One of them is uh, Google Maps satellite image, which is uh, right here at the bottom. And we have another one here, which is uh, uh, an upper layer, which gives a so-called transparent uh, Google uh, streets. And uh, what that is is that simply sh shows boundaries and labels and streets with a transparent pixel b between them so you can see what lies underneath. It's a, it's a good way of providing a reference layer above some other layer. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to import some uh, TIFFs from... Uh, uh, USGS, and we'll call this. We're going to create a new folder called SRTM. Let's call that SRTM3. Click Create Folder, and I'm going to create a folder because when I import 32 of these files, I want those files to don't want them cluttering up my project here. I want them neatly in in the folder. So I'm going to click File Import, and here are all my uh, TIFFs. They're all about 25 gigabytes in size. I'm going to click the first one, then I'll Shift click the second one, and you can see that puts them all into the file name box here. And then I can click Open and Manifold will import all of them. What we're doing here is we're importing about 32 TIFFs, each one of which is about 25, gigabytes in, 25 megabytes in size. There we go, it's done already. So that's about uh, 800 megabytes worth of uh, data we've just imported. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, drag and drop each of these images that was created, because for each one of those files that we imported, we created an image, the images table, and, some, and a metadata con comments file. I just want the images to drag and drop all at once, and I don't want to do that 32 times. So instead, I'll use a little trick here. In the Filter button, I'll command the Project Pane to show only images. I click on the first one to highlight it. Then I Shift-click on the last one to highlight it. And now I can just drag and drop that whole block in one go uh, into the map. Perfect. Let's take a look at how my layers are set up here. And the Google Street Map layer is indeed at the top. Okay, excellent. Let's uh, zoom in and take a look to see what we have here. And as you can see, what we've done is these different tiles come together to uh, form uh, a one large rectangle, but they're all separate tiles, as we can see by turning that one off, the 32 of them. Uh, one problem with the USGS uh, server is that it provides uh, this terrain elevation data, which is so-called SRTM data. That's uh, from a space shuttle mission where they map the uh, elevation of, the of most of the entire Earth. Uh, and... Uh, the problem is that USGS provides it in these tiny little tiles of only about 25, gigabyte, 25 megabytes in size. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to assemble them all into one big image because that's just a lot easier to work with than working with 32 separate layers. Uh, Manifold provides a very easy way of doing that. Let's uh, change the project pane here to show everything. Show all. There you go. Uh, and uh, the way we do that is we simply click Edit, Merge, Merge Images. And now we can use the Merge dialog to merge all these images into a single image, which we call... Let's call that uh, merged SRTM. And uh, we don't want to merge the Google Street Maps layer that's above because that's petabytes of data. And we don't want to merge this one down here, which is petabytes of data as well. So I double click that to turn that off. This shows us all the layer image layers in our map. Uh, and I just want to merge these guys here. Now, it takes the projection that it's going to use, the coordinate system that it's going to use for the new image that it's going, new merged image that it's going to create from the very first. Uh, image layer in the map. And that's a matter of convenience. That's that's pretty cool if all we have in the map is just, say, the images that we want to merge. But in this case, we have this sort of spurious uh, Google layer on top, and we don't want to merge all those into Pseudo Mercator. That's going to be wrong. Instead, what we want to do is we want to use one of the coordinate systems that's used here in one of these um, images. And the easiest way to do that automatically is to simply right-click on one of them, choose Use Coordinate System, and bang, it's automatically adopted for us. While you're learning how to work with merge images, please, please, please always make sure to right-click on one of the images that you're merging and choose Use Coordinate System, and that way you'll be sure that you get some sort of sensible coordinate system here up top. Okay, we've done that. We've set it all up, and now we just click Merge Components, and what it'll do is it'll create a uh, new image. Instead of uh, 32 separate images that have about 800 megabytes worth of uh, terrain elevation data in them, it's going to make a copy of all the data. It's not going to... Uh, it's done already. It's going to make a copy of all that data, and it's going to create a single image called, right here called Merged SRTM. Let's take a look at that guy in a map as well. I'm going to double-click this map open, 
And that one is just like the map we just started with, except it's, it doesn't yet have any image layers. I'm going to drag and drop this merged SRTM layer, layer into that. If I want to zoom to fit on that, I can just control click that layer, and that zooms to fit on that layer. I'll zoom out a bit to, see, to give some context. So we can see that it is a single layer, which is indeed exactly like the uh, 32 separate uh, train elevation uh, uh, data sets that we merged together. Uh, let's now style this to make it look prettier because the, using the default uh, grayscaling uh, from uh, the lowest elevation to the highest is, is not all that is not particularly informative. So let's uh, let's make it look prettier. To do that, we will use the style panel. I'm going to right click on here, and I will choose channel one, channel zero, excuse me, because it's just a uh, single channel image. What Manifold does is when you bring in a TIFF that's uh, train elevation data. Uh, it uh, uses all three channels as a grayscale image. I now want to color it with a palette. And in order to facilitate doing that, when I first make that choice of channel zero to use as a palette, Manifold will scan all the pixels in the image and will recompute, uh, will compute automatically what those values are so that thereafter when I do things like this, the change number breaks from say s s five to eight, click tally, all that happens very instantly. It already, Manifold has all the statistics that it needs uh, to know about that image. Uh, what's amazing, by the way, is we're doing all this in Release 9, but like I say, everything that we see here works exactly the same way in Viewer. So all these very powerful capabilities are there in the free viewer as well. Let's add some color, and I'm going to choose the uh, Color Palette, uh, Color Brewer CB Spectral Palette. I picked that off. That, that was off the screen off the video. And uh, Update Style, and that shows that. I don't particularly like that style because, it's uh, to my taste, it's too, mu too much red. So I'm going to click in here, click Control-A, and I will reverse the application of colors. Click Update Scott Style. So there, I think that's a better, prettier, calmer presentation. And um, in addition, I think it would be nice if we did some hill shading. So let's click the Options tab here. Click Use sh Hill Shading. And for Z-Scale, I'm going to use 0 0.08, which I know from experience is uh, good hill shading. Uh, if you don't have the experience to know that, that's no big deal. You can uh, just uh, uh, tinker around with the Z scale and try different values until you find one that you like. So great, now we have uh, this uh, train elevation image, and if we like, let's click on the uh, Google, Google Transparent Streets above it. And as we can see, we're looking at most of the Italian Alps here to the north of Italy. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit to see what we see. Uh, here's the Bernaro Pass between uh, Balzano and up to Innsbruck. Uh, Here's the uh, border with Switzerland, and the Matterhor Matterhorn is right here. This is the uh, Lake District of Italy, which is a fascinating part of Italy. As we uh, zoom in, we can see that right here is where the uh, Swiss border is. Actually, this is an interesting spot because this is a, where a part of Switzerland drops down through the Alps, and right here near Como, near Lake Como, this is still Switzerland. So this is a part of Switzerland that has uh, palm trees and uh, lemons. As we zoom in, we can see closer and closer. Here's Como, Lake Como. Uh, this is uh, Lugano, which is just a fantastic part of Switzerland. If you ever have a chance, uh, visit Lugano is uh, a real dream time kind of place, like I say, with palm trees and lemons. Right here is uh, Campione, which is an enclave that's uh, part of Italy that's an island within Switzerland. And uh, that's a pretty cool place because if, you, if you're one of the lucky 3,000 people that lives in Campione, you don't pay any taxes. Uh, it's administered by Switzerland, but it's a part of Italy. So uh, the Swiss don't charge any taxes and the Italians don't charge any taxes. Let's turn this off, and you can see the incredible detail that we have here and uh, the convenience of uh, working with it all as uh, a single image. We can just style it as, as we like, and we can uh, change the colors and all, all, those, all, all those sorts of things. Anyway, what we've seen how to do here is we've seen how to take uh, these uh, 32 map layers, uh, which are a real pain in the neck to uh, individually manipulate and individually style, and we've combined them into a single, whoops, turn the back on, into a single image. Uh, which uh, right here, you can see right here in the map, and uh, we can we've styled that, we've colored it as we uh, uh, using the uh, style panel, and it's way more convenient. As you can see, Manifold combines those uh, 800 uh, megabytes worth of images uh, essentially instantaneously. If you're working with really large images that that are like uh, I don't know, you know, I guess a couple hundred images that uh, take a few gigabytes, it'll take it a little longer. Uh, it'll uh, flick into using parallel processing if uh, those images that you're combining using different are using different projections, different coordinate systems. It'll combine them all into the target coordinate system. 
In uh, future videos, we'll discuss how to uh, manipulate the various projection dialogues to get exactly the right effect you want in terms of uh, uh, scaling X and Y. But in the meantime, let's, let's call it a day, and uh, I urge you to try the uh, Merge Images feature. You can also merge uh, drawings like this and merge labels as well. So thanks for watching, and goodbye from uh, Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.